Welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. For more studies, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.org. And now, here's Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study in the Book of Genesis. Tonight is study number 13 in Genesis chapter 39, and we'll begin reading in verse 19. And it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife, which he spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. Well, we're continuing to look at the spiritual teaching that um, is found in this passage. And as, um, you know, I've mentioned before, Potiphar, the officer of Pharaoh, is a figure of God himself, Joseph, a type and figure of Christ, Potiphar's wife, of national Israel that uh, lied and brought false witness against the Lord Jesus Christ and and the casting into prison. Well, first we see, um, we're told that his wrath was kindled, Potiphar's wrath was kindled against Joseph. And then he took him and put him into the prison. Now, um, what can we learn from that? Um, well, let's ask the question, when Israel brought false witnesses or when they tempted the Lord Jesus and tempted him and then brought false witnesses against him and and their false witness did not agree, but finally uh, the high priest of Israel rent his clothes after Christ made a statement indicating he was the Son of God indicating he was God, and and they turned Jesus over to the Roman authorities to be crucified. That was accomplishing whose wrath? The wrath of Israel? The wrath of the leaders of Israel? Well, yes, they were very angry, but it was all done in order to carry out the wrath of God against the Lord Jesus Christ because Christ was demonstrating what he had done in bearing the sins of his people at the foundation of the world. And when he bore sins in his body at the foundation of the world and God saw the sin upon him, God the Father struck him dead and smote him. He was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And, and that was, again, done out of wrath, out of anger towards the sin that the Son had become fully identified with or that the Lord Jesus Christ had become fully identified with. He wouldn't become the Son until he would rise from the dead. And, 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 and so, yes, Jesus had to be turned over to uh, Pilate and the Roman authorities so he would be crucified, so he would be killed. And, and God did pour out his wrath upon him. We, we know that when he was hanging on the cross and he cried out, um, uh, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We know it from a passage such as Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, speaking of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus, we read in verse 3, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we, we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. 
He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. That's describing to us the outpouring of the wrath of God upon him. And, um, and, and so uh, this is um, fitting to the spiritual understanding that we're seeing in this passage that God puts it this way in verse 19, his wrath was kindled. His wrath was kindled and, and uh, then he takes action to put Joseph into prison. Now just uh, one, other, one other verse in Job concerning God's wrath and keep in mind that Job is a similar figure of Christ under the wrath of God as Joseph is in chapter 39 of Genesis. And so we read in Job 19, it says, and, and this uh, in verse 1, this is Job who answered and said, uh, and, and he is speaking throughout the whole chapter. And then we read in verse 6, Know now that God hath overthrown me and has compassed me with his net. Behold, I cry out of wrong, but I am not heard. I cry aloud, but there is no judgment. He hath fenced up my way that I cannot pass, and he has set darkness in my pass. He has stripped me of my glory. That is, God has stripped Job, this great type of Christ, of my glory and taken the crown from my head. He has destroyed me on every side, and I am gone. And mine hope hath he removed like a tree. He hath also kindled his wrath against me, and he counted me unto him as one of his enemies. That is exactly the picture here in Genesis 39 with Potiphar, and his wrath is kindled just as uh, God's wrath is said to be kindled upon Job. But not for Job's sake. It's, it's for the uh, deeper spiritual illustration. The picture that Job in this historical parable is portraying of the Lord Jesus Christ suffering under the weight of the wrath of God. Okay, um, going back here to our chapter in Genesis 39. After we read... His wrath was kindled, it says in verse 20, And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. Potiphar grabbed a hold of Joseph and took him and brought him to the prison where the king's prisoners were bound. The, and now, um, just an observation here. Remember that Potiphar is said to be the captain of the guard. If we go back to uh, Genesis 39, verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And... Uh, in chapter 40, in, in the next chapter, and you know we'll get in, into this shortly, well, I'll start in verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that the butler, the king of Egypt, and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward, and to be put in ward, that's the same thing as in prison. He put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. Did you notice that? That the butler and the baker were put in ward in the house of the captain of the guard. Who Who's the captain of the guard 
Potiphar. Potiphar is the captain of the guard. And that is, um, we're told, that is the same place, the same prison where Joseph was bound. So Joseph is bound in the house of Potiphar, in the house of the captain of the guard. In other words, he didn't have to go far. Um, Joseph's master took him, back in verse 20 of chapter 39, and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And we, we just read the butler and baker were put there by the king. So um, uh, Potiphar had charge over this prison. It was in his house, um, connected to it. Uh, I don't know exactly how it was laid out, but um, he, he didn't have to travel very far at all. And it also tells us that he was able to keep an eye on Joseph, that's for sure. And he put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. So Joseph is in the prison uh, of the house of the captain of the guard, who he had offended because of his wife. The, really, the wife is the offense. And, and this tells us something, you know, about Christ, because, well, actually, first we'll have to discuss and, and understand prison. Uh, and then, it, you know, as we see Joseph, an innocent man, being thrown into prison, of course, that will um, teach us about the Lord Jesus Christ's sinlessness, that he had no sin upon him. When he went to the cross, that he never had any sin of his own. It was only when he was laden with the sins of his people, the foundation of the world, that that he had to die uh, bearing sin or for those sins. When he went to the cross in time in 33 AD, he had no sin and he was simply demonstrating uh, the the earlier atonement. Well, um now, prison, even today, although it, the, the whole idea um, of justice and our justice system is, is being um, destroyed, it, uh, you know, um, sin is um, greatly um, penetrating and, and, and uh, corrupting it, but but uh, even today, the idea behind prison is there is someone who has broken the law. He's broken the law, and and a judge uh, in our system, along with a jury, sentences that man to a, a sentence in prison of a certain length in order to pay for the penalty of breaking the law. So we see that prison has to do, um, it's a place for lawbreakers. It's a place for lawbreakers to pay their penalty for breaking the law and, 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 and judges are involved and, and so forth. And of course, that has everything to do with God and his law of the Bible. Because... God has given his law to mankind. Mankind is duty-bound to obey the law of God, and yet we fail to do so. And so God gives sentence for the lawbreaker, the transgressor of his law, the sinner, the sentence is death. The wages of sin is death. Uh, if you keep the whole law, Yet offend in one point, you're guilty of all, and 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 so uh, going to prison is like coming under the wrath of God because when you go into prison, now you have to pay for your crime, you have to pay for your transgression, and that's what we see when we go to the New Testament uh, in Matthew chapter five. That's 
uh, the picture that, that God draws us in Matthew 5, starting in verse 25. It says there, Agree with thine adversary quickly, whiles thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Now, do you see that? Do you, uh, do you notice uh, what I just read in Matthew 5, uh, verse 25? The judge delivers thee to the officer, and you are cast into prison. Well, what did Potiphar, the officer of Pharaoh, do with Joseph? And I'll read it again in Genesis 39, uh, verse 20. Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. The officer put Joseph into prison exactly as um, it's described here in Matthew 5.25. And God is saying, agree with your adversary quickly while you're in the way with him. And who is the adversary? Well, the adversary of God and his kingdom is Satan. The name Satan means adversary. Yes, but who is the adversary of the sinner? The sinner is in the kingdom of Satan. He, he's in darkness. Uh, he, he's on Satan's side. So Satan's not his adversary. God is his adversary. The, the law of God is his adversary. And, and so God here is saying, agree with your adversary quickly. That is, come to God. And of course, the quickly part had to do with the day of salvation. Uh, that is, this agreement with our adversary God ought to necessarily had to take place within the day of salvation while you're in the way with him before you reach the destination of judgment day and that is past but we can still understand it that we were to agree with god when his word pronounces our guilt when it condemns our sin when it it judges us and says, you are a lawbreaker. You have offended and, and therefore you are not good. You are not righteous. You are not just. You are a sinner subject to the wrath of God and you should go to prison. You should come under the wrath of God and, and really suffer and die and be no more at the end that is what our adversary was telling us in the day of salvation. And that's exactly what the elect child of God agreed with. We agreed with it like David. If we go to Psalm 51, after David had been convicted of sin by Nathan the prophet, as the Lord sent Nathan to him, and then uh, he was moved to write this psalm, in Psalm 51, verse 1, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me throughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. You see that agreement? There's no fighting. There's no resisting. There's no stubborn rebelliousness um, in, in trying to justify oneself and their sins. Well, uh, yeah, I did wrong, God, but you see, I grew up in a in a, a bad home, or or my circumstances were this, uh, or whatever of a million excuses, and and possible reasons people use to justify their sin. None of that, none of that, just agreement. 
You're right, O God. You are right to send Nathan the prophet. I was wrong. I am guilty. I am worthy to die. I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me and I can never remove it from thy sight. And, and the, all that sin I have done is against you, O Lord. And, and I tell you these things so that you'll be justified when you speak and clear when you judge. Uh, for your judgment will be just and righteous and, and accurate. And, and I agree with this. No resistance, no fighting against God, but rather uh, just bowing down before him uh, as a sinner, guilty, uh, full of shame. And, and there we can plead, or there we could have in the day of salvation, there we could cry out to God. And there we could say, oh God, I have no basis, no, no reason for you to forgive me my sins. I don't deserve your forgiveness. I haven't earned it in any way. What I've earned is the, the rod of your wrath. I've earned death. But oh Lord, you're a merciful God. And having had or have mercy upon me, I uh, I have to remember I'm speaking now, and I hope you also understand when it was the day of salvation and we could cry for mercy. That time is now past, but that was the idea. That's why you agree with your adversary quickly because there, there's no time to waste um, foolishly trying to get around God's law, to get around the fact says all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. No, we, we know he knows our heart. We know he knows everything. And we just uh, admit and agree and acknowledge. And, and then we can go on uh, at that time to the most important thing from our perspective, just crying for help, crying for his grace and mercy, his undeserved favor granted towards us only uh, because he is a God of mercy. And, and that's what this um, verse is telling us concerning agreeing with our adversary. Well, uh, we're going to uh, have to stop here. And then, Lord willing, when we get together in our next Bible study, we'll pick this up once again. And we'll continue talking about prison, prison that Joseph was cast into. Thank you for joining us for eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. For more studies and information, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.org. Until our next Bible study, may the Lord's perfect will be done.